Good evening. My name is Rose Taylor and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Chicago Northside Zoom class. This is a school and not a church. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The Dean of the Chicago Northside Zoom class is Dr. John Quaits, and the president is Dr. Kenyatta Jackson. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are lords many and gods many, but we now know that each lord must have a name and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike lord and god, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world called Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior 
during the time he walked the earth plane. A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop of Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The objectives and aims of the Chicago Northside Zoom class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and as he actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to experience extirpate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers laid in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern practical science. Fifth, to promote, to, I'm sorry, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation in ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now, in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. Today's class will be dedicated in prayer by Dr. Kenyatta Jackson. Our scripture lesson for this evening is Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, which will be read by Dr. DeAndre Stansel. May we now have our prayer. Dr. Jackson, are you there? At this time, may we all bow our hearts and minds. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father Yahweh, we want to thank you in the name of your son, Yahshua the Messiah, for giving us another opportunity to come to class to learn something of your purpose, pattern, and plan. We want to thank you, Father, for everything that you have done and everything that you will do for us. We ask, Father, that you lead and guide our footsteps and keep us always in remembrance of your ever presence. We ask as you bring the speakers forward tonight to please open up our eyes and our ears so that we may hear what thus saith Yahshua the Messiah. May we all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will be reading uh, Jeremiah 
the 17th chapter out of a King James Bible and certain the true names were, were needed. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Jeremiah 17. The sin of Judah is written with a, a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the tables of their heart and upon the horns of, of your altars. While if their children remember their altars in their groves by the green trees upon the high, I'm, I'm sorry, upon the high hills, all oh, my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy <clears throat> and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou even thy, thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I give thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Thus saith Yahweh, cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his, his arm, and whose heart departed from the from Yahweh. For he shall be like the <clears throat> for he should be like the health in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Yahweh and whose hope Yahweh is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall <clears throat> cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Wicked. Who can know it? Yah, I, Yahweh, search the heart. I try the, ring, the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatch, <coughs> then not so. He that gather getteth, I'm sorry, he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of the, his days, and at the end shall be a fool. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Yahweh, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken Yahweh, the fountain of living waters. Sorry, just turning the page. Oh, the fountain of living waters. Hear me, O Yahweh, and I shall be healed. Give me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, where is the word of Yahweh? Let it come now. As for me, I have not has, uh, I have not uh, Hasn from being a pastor to follow thee, neither have I desired the woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before thee. Be not a terror unto be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in all the day of evil. Let them be confounded that prosecute me, but let not me be confounded. Let them be dis dismayed, but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. Thus said Yahweh unto me, go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, whereby the kings of Judah come in and by which they go out and in all the gates of Jerusalem and say unto them, Hear ye the word of Yahweh, ye kings of Judah, and all Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Thus saith Yahweh, take me, I'm sorry, so take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gate of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day. Neither do you do ye do ye any work. 
but hallow ye the Sabbath day as I commanded you, as I commanded your fathers. But they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made, but made their next step that they might not hear nor receive instruction. And it shall come to pass, if we diligently hearken unto me, saith Yahweh, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but hollow the Sabbath day to do no work therein. Then shall there enter into the gates of this city kings, kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and this city shall remain forever. And they shall come from the cities of Judah and from the places about Jerusalem and from the land of Benjamin and from the plain and from the mountains and from the south, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices and meat offerings and incest and bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of Yahweh. But if ye will not hearken unto me to hollow the Sabbath day and not to bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the seventh day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the places, the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. That was Jeremiah 17th chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you, DeAndre Stansel. Before we call our first speaker this evening, we just have a few announcements. We'd like to welcome everyone who's joined us this evening. We'd like to thank uh, Naomi for joining us. We'd also like to thank Dr. Katanya Parks from our Charlotte class. We'd also like to thank Dr. Sasha Rekmilevich from our Madison, Wisconsin class. We welcome you in the bonds of peace and all of our visitors this evening as well. Tonight, there'll be a two speaker format. Each speaker will receive a sign alerting them that their lecture is coming to a close. Please acknowledge the sign. Our first speaker for this evening is Dr. DeAndre Stansel. Dr. Stansel. Oh, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Um, oh boy. <laughs> I honestly and truly did not have anything on my um, heart and mind. Um, well, I do it well say that all thanks and praises go to Yasha the Messiah. Um, at least my only hope and glory and should be for everybody else. Uh <clears throat> Like I said, I really didn't have too much on my heart, man. Um, maybe I can lay a brief foundation for the second speaker. Uh, uh, as you know, we always start, um, you know, beginning at Moses. Uh, maybe we can pick that up in um, what is that, uh, Luke uh, 24, I think in 27, I believe. Um, because, um, as we know down here, we go by pattern and, um, and we go by, um, uh, you know, a, a pattern that Yahweh had gave for us so we can, uh, you know, know how to worship and study him. And he said, um, cause really the, uh, um, the Exodus came before the Genesis. So that's why he makes that. Uh, a statement beginning of Moses. Everyone thinks that um, um, the beginning of the Bible is um, Genesis, the first chapter, when he started creating the, earth, um, the world. But really, the beginning, well, at least as far as the vision he gave Moses, came from when he Moses was in the Mount uh, 40 days and 40 nights. Um, I believe that's in uh, Exodus, the 24th chapter there. And he shows Matt up. Uh, um, Moses that vision and um because Moses is, is the accredited accredited writer of the first five books which is uh the law and um uh, uh which is Genesis uh, uh uh Genesis 
Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And the question that we should ask ourselves is, um, how did Moses know all this? Mo Moses wasn't born to many, many, many years after Noah and all the flood and all of that. So um, let's go ahead and get and look what it says beginning at Moses. And then we can go over to um, Exodus, the 24th chapter, where he's called up in the, in the mount. And then read all the way um, down where... Um, Yahweh starts to show him this tabernacle pattern. And then, um, it, okay, we'll get that. Well, let's get that first. But, and if there's no one to read, I can go ahead and read it myself. And that is, um, that's Luke 24. That's Luke 24 and 27. Luke. And beginning, oh. You want Luke 24 and 27 and 27 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them and all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. You went for okay. And no, and then go over to, um, go over to the, um, Exodus, the 24th chapter. Uh, and then start where he goes, um, Yahweh calls him up and starts to tell, show him that tabernacle pattern that he was uh, 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 required to build in the wilderness. So that's um, 24, 9 and 10. And then um, we can read down until um, he goes up into the mount. Okay, Exodus 24, 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. And there were under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. And Yahweh said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister, Joshua. Moses went up into the Mount of Elohim. And let me, let me wait, and let me stop you there. And then I'll let you continue. Um, I do understand that there are some new people in here. Um, so I want to try to get... Um, some of the name scriptures, because I think that's important too. But, um, and this is wh why it's important is because when he says his minister, Joshua, uh, 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 rose up and, and went with him, because uh, if you were to read a uh, few verses earlier, it, would, it says that Yahweh told Moses to come up alone. And then, but then you have his minister, Joshua, coming with him. And when you, you come down to the school, this is why the names are so important here and in, 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 in um the true names. We found out find out that Yahshua, I mean that Joshua really was um Yahshua the Messiah. That's why he went up with him, because he was the creator. And he actually transformed into that tabernacle pattern uh that we have here. And if you read in the um, if you listen to the moderation, it says there was no J in the um, <clears throat> excuse me, there was no J in the Hebrew language, Latin or or uh, Greek. To this day, it's not one. So, uh, but that's a whole nother lecture to figure out who Joshua really was. So, I just wanted to re to uh, iterate that. But go ahead and finish. Fourteen first. And he said unto the elders, tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Zion. And the cloud covered it six days. Okay, we can stop there because um, if you learn anything in school, when you have a, um, oh, excuse me, when you have a cold in there, um, that denotes that, you know, there's something to, well, the way the Bible is written and it's, it's not, how can I put it? It's not 
uh, I don't want to say correct, but, you know, maybe not formatted right or whatever, but that hole in there is when, and, and our founder taught us this from the um, vision that Yasha showed him, is that that means something. That means this is when Yahweh um, is now, that's why we say the Exodus is, for, is before the Genesis, when Yahweh showed him the tabernacle pattern. So this is where you get uh, uh, what Genesis begins to pick up. Uh, uh, and in and, 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 uh, um, Genesis 1 and 1, when it says he created the earth, it is our form and void, he created the light, um, the waters, the animals, man, and all of that. That's when he showed Moses, uh, 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 and he broke it down. And, and because remember, Moses was just a man. So, I mean, it would have just blew his mind if he just tried to pump everything in it at once. So he had to slow it down over a period of the time and show them each day a creation. And so and so he can write it out so we can understand it better. But uh, um, maybe we can read a few verses in Genesis and then um, we don't have to read all the six days, just get the first three. And then um, uh, um, we can go over to uh, uh, Genesis, the second chapter. And then where it says, in the day that Yahweh created the heaven and earth, because people, still believe in this big bang theory. They don't believe in um, that it was one God or whatever that created the earth and all these the stuff was just rumbling around in the outer space somewhere and then banged into each other and sparked life on earth, which makes no sense if, if you think about it. But people honestly believe that. But um, so go ahead over to Genesis and we'll read like, um, maybe we can read the first uh, two days and the third day, and then just read over in, in the second chapter when that, when he it says he cleared it up, he created thing just he just willed this creation into existence. Genesis one and one. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven heavens and the earth, and the earth became without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim divided between the light and between the darkness. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. Okay. And, Go ahead. And six Sorry. verse. And Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmaments and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Eighth verse. And Elohim called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And Elohim said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And Elohim called the dry portion earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, let the earth bring forth tender grass and the herb yielding seed, the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth tender grass, herb yielding seed after his kind, and the trees yielding fruit, whose whose seed was in itself after his kind, and Elohim saw it was good. Thirteen first, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Okay, okay. that's good. And then go over to the second chapter. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to, um, you know, um, just this is what he showed Moses. That's why we just read in Luke where it says beginning at Moses, because Moses is the one again, um, was the one accredited with reading, writing the first five books of the Bible, which is commonly referred to as, as the law order the Torah, I think it is in Hebrew. And um, he's breaking it down for Moses and showing him the days of creation. But really, like I said, it didn't take Yahweh all that time to make it. He just willed it into in, in, in existence. And go ahead. Right. Um, Genesis uh, second chapter two and one. These are the origins of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh Elohim made the earth in the heavens. Okay, created in the day that Yahweh made the earth in the in the in the, in the heaven. So that should 
disprove any theory about some big bang theory or if you wanted to use a big bang theory <laughs> Yahweh just thundered it in and it was so if you want to use that theory but it was no stuff floating around in the universe and then they clashed together and then life was formed on the on the planet that's just not so okay Yahweh is in complete control of everything that was everything that was made by him and for him it was it's all a representation of him and um you know, I'm going to speed this up a little bit because I, I understand we have new uh, visitors. And I do believe going over the name is important because the first thing that you um, do when you um, meet someone is you ask, well, what is your name? Or they normally ask you or whatever, what is your name? So that's the first thing um, that um, when you get to know someone is their name first. You don't get to know no one without their name. And those names are vitally important. They are vitally, you will miss the whole boat if you do not have the correct names of the father and his son. Uh, uh, in the name of the father, Yahweh, the word of son is Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah uh, is the savior, okay? And Yahshua is whom Yahweh sent uh, to atone for our sins and to die for us and, and to take away our sins. And Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. Because like we was just reading here, Genesis. And then if you go over to the sixth chapter, you go over, um, and we don't have to get it, but it goes over. Uh, but I would like to get uh, Exodus. Um, what is that? Uh, Three. No. I, um, is it 12? I forget. Uh, what it says, by my name, I was, uh, I didn't know. When you're reading, when you're reading this, um, when you're reading the Bible and when you go over to Noah and, and all of that, there was a lot of stuff that took place before the name Yah Yahweh was ever even re revealed to mankind. OK, so uh, um, uh, uh, you have Moses in the flood. I mean, Noah in the flood. And that 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 was a true event. Um, and it's remarkable that even uh, even though Noah did not know his name, uh, but he still believed in him. You know, he still believed in, in Yash and Yah Yahshua the Messiah, and it did. And if you go over, to, uh, um, I know it's in um, Exodus six, Exodus six and three. And I appeared unto Abraham, is that what you want? And unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, as El Shaddai. But by my name Yahweh was I not known to them. See, yeah. See, they didn't even know know his name. And tell you, he goes over the five who, who appeared to him. See, they called him El Shaddai. Um, and like I said, Noah didn't know his name. Abraham didn't even know his name. Um, and he appeared to all of them, and they did not uh uh, uh know his name. I mean, he even came down and appeared to talk and and ate and drank with. Abraham and told him how, um, you know, he was going to have his son, Isaac, and through his seed would be blessed and all of that. And he still didn't even know his name, but they had faith in him. And I think, I don't know if that's in uh, Hebrew or whatever it said, but by faith, Noah believed, you know, and by Abraham, by all of them, by faith. And that's what we should have faith, you know, in the Messiah himself. But uh, um, I want to speed it up to go over to, um, Exodus and hold the um, third chapter there while he in, he finally introduces himself to um, uh, um, Moses there. But um, I know I'm skipping a lot of her, I'm skipping a lot of part. But like I said, um, after the flood came, on there were only eight people that were saved in that ark of safety, and uh, it was only Noah and his three sons and their wives all of their wives. So there were only eight people that were saved. And believe me, the earth was populated back then. Not as much now, but it was populated back then. But Noah and his and eight people all together was the only people that were saved in that flood. And then um, they had, when they finally got out, um, they were given an order to replenish the earth and blah, 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 blah. Then you get all the way down to... Um, um, uh, 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 I, I mean, Abraham, the promise was given to Abraham and out of his, out of his seed, uh, 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 great substance will come out of it. He, he was a promise seed, Isaac, 
uh, 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 was his the promised seed, and he he Isaac came, and then out of Isaac uh, came Jacob, and then Jacob begat the twelve children or the twelve sons or whatever, uh, 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 um, the twelve tribes of Egypt, I mean of uh, um, Israel, and um, they were down there, and a famine came, uh, uh, and then they had they were pushed down there to um, Egypt there. And this is one of the story because he foretold, you know, you know, maybe we should just get that. Go over to uh, uh, the promise that was given to Abraham. And and the only reason why I'm speaking it up, because I really want to get to the name, but when Yahweh introduces himself to them. Uh, but uh, 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 and that promise that was gave to Abraham, that his seed would go down, be evenly entreated, but they would come out with great substance. They were going to go down to a land that wasn't, that wasn't known and all of that, but they would come out. And that's when the story of Moses picks up, because then Jacob, like I said, had the 12 uh, uh, tribes of Egypt, I mean, Israel, they went down to Egypt. And then after that, they began to grow and grow and grow and grow. And then out of those tribes, then uh, uh, Mos uh, Moses picks up. So let's get Abraham the promise that was given to him. Genesis 15 and 13. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. Um, is that what you wanted? Yeah. And they'll come out with great substance. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Oh, that's how he wound up down there in Egypt um, because of that famine and through the problems that was already set up way back in the day through Abraham. And like I said, he, he had to go through all these people. And then, um, and they were, they were evilly entreated down there in Egypt. Um, and then after that, Yahweh, you know, he rose up Moses uh, uh, and was working through Moses. So, um, let's go over to Exodus, the third chapter. And I know I'm probably not doing the best job. I wasn't expecting to be called, so bear with me. But let's go to Exodus, the third chapter and read down there. Start at one. When he, and this is when Yahweh finally, you know, Moses, uh, I'm pretty sure every part body, even if you knew, know the story of Moses is well Talk not the right way, but it's well known who Moses was. I mean, they just <laughs> I just watched the Ten Commandments um this following weekend because you know it was supposed to be Easter or whatever. And Moses, Moses was just the vessel that Yahweh chose. You know, um, there was a death decree that went out. Um Pharaoh sent out a death decree down there that any of the uh Hebrew women that was to give birth, uh, the daughters you can keep alive, but the male sons you should kill. Uh, Moses' mother saw that he was a goodly child and that um, so she winds up, you know, she didn't want to, you know, him killed. So she puts him in a, uh, uh, uh arc and, 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 and pitches it with slam and pitch. And then she floats it down the river now. And there's a death bear, death bear resurrection principle with that. Floats him down the now. Pharaoh's daughter was down there bathing, sees the babe. Uh, 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 had compassion upon him. Um, so she gets him out of there, resurrects him out of that uh, 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 ark there, and then um, raises him at, raises him as her own. Uh, in spite of what people, they teach out in the world, Moses knew he was a Hebrew because he was circumcised because that was one of the commandments that you had to get circumcised. So uh, he knew he was a Hebrew. Um, so after about 40 years, he, um, well, actually he fled the land of Egypt because he winds up slewing a man down there, one of the Egyptians, because he seen him um, beating up on one of his brethren. So he didn't want to get caught or get killed. So he flees, he goes down to the land, land of Midian, uh, out into the desert there. And um, this is, he was out there 40 years again. There's always a principle with that 40. And this is where Mo, uh, Yahweh calls upon him. And if we can pick it up there in um, the third, uh, Exodus 3 and 1. Exodus 3 and 1. Now Mel Moses kept the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, 
And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the Mount of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And okay, most- so this is, I'm going to stop you. I'm sorry. This is actually a vision that Moses is seeing. Anybody knows that a bush, if it's caught on fire, or you set it on fire, it will burn and it will be consumed. And, and if you don't put it out in time enough, anything else around it will burn up with it. So this is a vision that Moses is seeing in his, in his mind, in his heart and mind, a vision that Yahweh gave him because he was uh, uh, down there. He was tending to the flock. He uh, married uh, Jethro Rurel's daughter. Uh, 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 and so he was, uh, 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 you know, tending to his father-in-law flock. He goes to the backside of a mountain, sees this bush, and, and, and it was like a great wonder to him. That's why he said, well, I'm going to turn aside. But really, when he says, I'm going to turn aside, that's in his heart and in his mind. Like, it, 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 my full attention is going to be on this bush. And why is it not burning? And when Yahweh saw that, he called to him out of the midst of that bush. But go ahead. Right. Third verse. And Moses said, <clears throat> I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush do, does not burn. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. And you say, why did he take off his shoes? Mm -hmm. Uh, What's on the bottom of your feet, your soul? Any time that you're in the presence of Yahweh, you are standing on holy ground. Anytime, it doesn't matter where you at, you are standing on holy ground. And he had to bear his soul. That's why he had to take off his shoes because we have soles on the bottom of our feet. You have to bear your soul in front of Yahweh. Go ahead. Six verse. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of thy father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, the Elohim of Jacob, And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look unto Elohim. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. So he said he heard their cry. But remember the promise that he gave to Abraham way back then, that your people, your seed would go down and be evilly entreated. But they will come out with great substance. So this had to happen. It had to happen because Yahweh set this up like this. It had to happen like this. And he said, I would judge that land. Okay. And he did. But go ahead. For I know thou, their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto and good. He, I'm sorry to cut you off. And he really did come down. Uh, in the form of Joshua, the son of Nun, which was really Joshua, the son of Nun. He really did come down in the flesh, but go ahead. Unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hethites and the Amorites and the Parasites and the Hethites and the Jebusites and all them sites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto, Mo- unto me, and I have also seen the oppression with the Egyptians oppressed them. Ten first. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto Elohim, who am, who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. 13 verse. And Moses said unto Elohim, behold. Now listen to this very, can we read it a little slow? But, and then can we read it without the true names first? Um, I don't have a King James in front of me. Um, I, I, I can read oh. it. Um, 
Now I want I'm gonna read this slow and I want you to listen to this because like I said, I understand there's new people on here. Uh I'm gonna read it without the true names inserted. Just and then I'm going to insert the well, then I'll have Katonia and you know read it the correct way. But this is Exodus uh, 3 and 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? So if you did any research about Egypt, Remember, this is where uh, Moses was born and raised. Uh, they were a nation, and still to this day, they worship many, 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 many gods. They had a ton of gods for the river, the uh, 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 for the river now, for frogs, for 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 any little thing, insect that crawled or bird that flew in the air. Or uh, whatever they had so many gods so at least moses had enough sense to say well what's your name <laughs> because we read in exodus 6 and 3 by his name no one even knew his name until he revealed it to Mo until moses until moses asked okay what is your name because he knew like he said they're gonna ask to me they're gonna ask me well what is his name okay what is God's name and they say, like in the moderation, God and Lord are not names and titles, but you know your local church or whoever would believe you to uh, think that God is a name and Lord is a name. Lord is a title, okay? Landlord, uh, Lord, whatever, Lord this, Lord that, uh, uh, the local gangs, vice Lord. So Lord is a title. God itself is a title. What God? Zeus, uh, 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 Buddha, uh, 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 whatever, God, Jesus. What God are you talking about? You need to have a name. First Corinthians 8 and 5 says each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. So you have to be specific. Um, you really do need to be specific depending on where you're at because it could cost you your life. Because uh, 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 some of these countries, you can't come in there using another, just to show you how important a name is. And the name is really important. Uh, you can't go over there to ISIS talking about, oh, yeah, well, Jesus, and they believe in Allah. I mean, they're literally chopping people's heads off of that. So you have to have a specific name. And Moses asked, asked him, well, then what should I tell him? Because he knew the people that had so many gods. And if you... Um, we can't get it all, but those plagues that Yahweh play, it was 10 devastating plagues that were poured out. All those get plagues were pay, pay, poured out on all the gods of Egypt. The frogs, they worship frogs, toads, and, and, and all kind of stuff down there they worship. So um, he's asking right there again, uh, 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 the God of your fathers have sent me unto you. And they should say to me, what is his name? Well, if your local minister or priest said, well, God is his name, but he's asking for, he's asking a specific question. What is his name? So why would even he even make that further comment if God itself was his name? So they just can't be the true answer. And so um, it says in the first 14th verse, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. That in, that in itself is wrong, okay? Uh, I, I am that I am. Well, that's limited, just like me. I am DeAndre, and, I, and that's just it. I can't be anything else. I have no power. So that might be a true statement for me, but, <laughs> but not for Yahweh, okay? It really should be, I will be what I will to be, meaning he can be anything at all times at every time, okay? But um, you have to do a little research about how the Bible was translated to understand why um, there are these errors in here, and especially with the name, uh, um, how they translated everything over wrong. But um, not everything, but you know, certain parts, certain things, and phrases and names that they translated over wrong. But uh, uh, so that in itself is a mistranslation. And like I said, when you when you get to know someone. 
uh, after you tell them your name, you normally tell them a little bit about yourself. So, hey, you know, my name is such and such, like me, my name is Yandra, you know, I like to work out, you know, I like to do this and that. So he's given him uh, um, what he is. I will be what I will to be. That's telling him all, you know, uh, something about him. And then he goes on to say, um, thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. And God, I'm sorry, in the 15th verse, and God said moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. Well, again, uh, all this is just uh, 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 mistranslations. Moses just asked him what was his name. After he has said that the, the, the uh, uh, children of Israel, you know, that, that God has sent me and they're going to ask, well, who, what is this God's name? So if you just read it plain like it is, it would give you some indication that, hey, I'm missing something here. Something is wrong. There was no name really revealed here. But if you go to a king, I mean, a holy name Bible and read it out of there, and I'm going to have Contonio read it for you, it starts to make sense. So go ahead and pick it up again at the 13th verse. Okay. I hope this is not confusing, but go no. ahead. Okay, this is Exodus uh, 3 and 13 through 15. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, I your Asher Ayah. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be, has sent me unto you. And Elohim said moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Okay. That makes for a much better read. Okay. Yahweh Elohim, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, the Elohim of Jacob, have sent me unto you. He said, this is my name forever. Not till the letter J comes along 1400 years it's about how old the letter J is in the English language. And I'm going to tell you something else. The English language is not that old. Uh, I think it might have been. Um, uh, um, there's actually three different types of English. Old English that goes by pattern to old English, middle English and modern English. But modern English is, if I'm not mistaken, like one of the last languages to have come, come along. Uh, they did not speak in spite of what everybody might, uh, you know, pe people think that don't know. They did not speak English in uh, Egypt. Um, English was not known to them. So they just could not have been this Jesus or whatever uh, 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 that people call him, which is, mm, well, we're pretty much a Christian nation and Jesus is pretty much the pop most popular God down here in, over in America, North America. But that was not so. We're talking about something. This was all taking place when I'm reading here. This is all taking place in Egypt. And they did not, they spoke Hebrew down there. They did not, they spoke, spoke ancient Hebrew, uh, if I'm not mistaken. They, and to this day, they did not have no uh, um, J's in their language. To this day, they still don't have it. Uh, uh, um, so there was, there was no possibility Jesus and Jehovah could have been the true savior's, uh, a name. And then some people say, oh, no, 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 no. Um, that's the English version. No, that's not the English version. He said, this is my name forever. Okay. That name Yahweh that was given to Moses, those sacred names are the same names that are, that was given back then that are still should be used to this day. There was no name change. And it's, sometimes it's funny, I laugh. Um, 
only the Messiah underwent a name change. Moses didn't go through a name change. None of the prophets went through a name change. Only the Messiah. Now, people, you're, they won't let you substitute, you know, the Apostle Paul, Peter, and none of that. But only the Messiah went through a name change. But they'll accept that. Um, but, um, yeah, but that was not, he said, this is my name forever, to be used forever. And the son's name is Yahshua the Messiah. So again, this is vitally important um, that you need to know. You have to know the names first. You 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 have to know these names. These names mean something. They have relevance. They're important. Uh, Yahshua is the only name that can save your soul down here. Okay. Uh, uh, what scripture is that? Um, no, you can not be saved by no other name. Um, what is it said? Mm, Acts four and. 12, yep. I think we can get that. Next There's one. no other name that you can be saved in. Dan. So it's very important. Like I said, when he told him, Ayash Aya, which means I will be what I will to be. That was an introduction of him. Just like I said, when you meet someone, it just makes sense that people would just, you know, think about it. When you meet someone for the first time, you normally ask, what is your name? Then you will go on because you're getting to know that person. Well, what do you do? Like, you know, you know, what do you like or whatever? And you know, and get them a little summary of yourself, just exactly what Yahweh did to Moses. I'm Yahweh and I will be what I will to be. That name alone got them out of Egypt. By that name alone, that got them out of Egypt. Okay. And eating of that lamb. And that was symbolic. And that's where you get the Passover. Well, what they consider to be Easter. You go over to Exodus, the 12th chapter, and it starts telling you about um, how it was a prescribed way they had to get out of Egypt after that last devastating plague there, uh, 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 and, and which is the uh, 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 stench of black darkness and the death of the firstborn. And if you did not have that blood of the lamb on your house in the inside of your door, because your blood is in the inside. It makes no sense for it to be on the outside. Unlike what you just, whoever watched the Ten Commandments this past weekend. Uh, 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 don't get me wrong, it was a good movie. Uh, but it just wasn't accurate. But um, your that blood was on the inside. Because if your blood is on the outside, normally you have a problem. And if it's too much on the outside of your body, yeah, you're in grave danger. It's not dying, if not dead. So that blood has to be on the inside. Oh, maybe we should get that. Uh, we'll go over to Exodus. We'll read that in the 12th chapter there about what they had to do. But see, they had to eat that that uh, lamb there. They had to, had to have that lamb inside of them, okay? And that lamb represents Yahshua the Messiah who died on the cross for us. So you had to partake, just like we're doing now, eating this lamb down here of Yahshua the Messiah. See, when we come down here and we listen to this, we're eating the words of Yahweh. We're eating his gospel. We're eating it we're, and taking it in, not physically, spiritually. So that's why they had to eat that lamb down there. That was the only way they could have got out of there. See, that lamb, like I said, it represents represented uh, uh, Yahshua the Messiah in them. And that's why that blood of that, uh, that lamb had to be inside of their house, in their house. Just like your blood has to be inside your house. Your body is a house for your soul. And your blood better be inside of your house or you got a real big problem on your hand. It has to be in you. So Yahshua the Messiah has to be in you. And it's not doing all these ceremonies because that was done away with. I can't get into the fulfillment scriptures because um, I don't have enough time for that. But um, um, Yahweh fulfilled all that physical law. There is no ceremonies you can do uh, to gain the whole Holy Spirit out here. But go ahead, read Exodus, I mean, yeah, um, first read Exodus, the 12th chapter, because I just wanted to get people a little bit familiar. I probably didn't do a good job with the name itself uh, of, about those names. And then read Exodus, the 12th chapter, uh, uh, and then go over, and then I'm just going to pick up some more scriptures. Well, first, I want to get them out of Egypt. So go ahead over there to uh, Exodus 12 and read down, read down to the 11th verse. Okay, Exodus 12 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all of the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month thou shalt take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. If the house be too little for the lamb, 
Let him and his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Fifth verse, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the two evenings. And they should take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Okay, Nine. that was on the menu that night. Lamb, bitter herbs, mm-hmm. unleavened bread. In spite of the big feast everyone just had this uh, past weekend, those were the only three things you were supposed to eat, and there wasn't no mass gathering. They said they ate it in their houses. Uh, uh, believe me, they had temples back then. They had temples they can go to and eat <laughs> at a mass gathering and eat food. They were not instructed to do that in spite of what you see people going coming in droves. And it's not to disrespect anyone, but going in droves into your local churches and having this big uh, 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 feast. That's not what how it was supposed to be. And even when the Messiah himself, Yahshua the Messiah, came in on the scene and fulfilled all that, that was his mission when Yahshua was born. Not Jesus, but when Yahshua came, he was to fulfill everything. He did fulfill the Last Supper. That's why it's called the Last Supper. He did not eat it in no church or no temple. He ate it, and uh, uh, they found some guy on the street. I forgot his name. And and, uh, him and his 12 disciples sat and ate the Last Supper in a house, somebody in, 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 in a personal house. He was not in no mass church eating everything on the menu. And having a fancy feast and all that. That's not how this is supposed to be. But go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm going all the way off. I'll okay. finish that. Nine first. Eat none of it raw nor boiled at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the inward thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Eleven first. And thou shalt, and thus shall you eat it. With your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. See, that was Yahweh's Passover. That was his, that's what you were supposed to do to get out of Egypt, okay? That was the only prescribed way that you could get out of Egypt. There was nothing else you can do to get yourself out of that situation. It was like that for a reason. And like I say, when Yahshua the Messiah got on the scene, he fulfilled all of that. And if we can go over to, because I know I'm biting down on time, and I want to get them out of Egypt, but I just want to show what they make, make it out of Egypt. They're making it to the wilderness. So if we can go over to Exodus, the uh, 14th chapter, um, start at the 28th uh, verse. No, 27 verse and read all the way down into the end of that chapter. Okay. It's like full verses. I just wanted to show when they went out, they finally got out of Egypt. That was on, like I said, I'm running out of time, but they got out of Egypt into the wilderness and go ahead. Exodus 14 and um, 27. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to its strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it. And Yahweh overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a well, a wall, Unto them on the right hand and on their left. And if you go over to First Corinthians, I think that's the ch- tenth chapter, but we don't have time to get it. Yeah. That's when they got baptized in the sea. They walk, in spite of what people think, they still think that water baptism um, is valid. It's not. The church of Israel says like that they walked on dry ground. They didn't get wet. But if you read in First Corinthians, the tenth chem- chapter, it says they were all baptized in the sea with no water. 
they walked on dry ground. So that should be an indication. Like I said, I don't have time to get into that, that you do not need water to get baptized. And y'all should fulfill that. When John the Baptist, Baptist baptized him. After that, water back to, after his death, bam, resurrection on the cross, water baptism is no longer valid in this day and age. But go ahead. Okay. Um, but the 29th verse. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus Yahweh saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which Yahweh did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared Yahweh and believed Yahweh sign. and his servant Moses. Okay. Uh, I see the sign. And so that's when they got over to the wilderness. Only have five minutes. But that's when they got over to the wilderness. Um, I'm going to speak this up. Uh, they began to act a fool, murmur, and all this other stuff. They built a golden calf. Um, then, you know, they sent spies over there to spy out the land of, because um, remember, they had still had one more step, and that was the whole uh, uh, Jerusalem, uh, the holy land, or uh, the most holy land, or whatever, the promised land. And so, um, um, 10 came back with a bad report. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was 10, said, hey, they came back with an evil report and made the people tremble and shake and the people didn't believe. So, you know, Yahweh is already upset with them anyway because they just kept doing all this stuff. And so he was like, well, because of this, I'm going to make you walk. He was only supposed to be out in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, they wound up being out there for 40 day, forty years, a day, a year for a day. Uh, he said, I'm going to make you walk around till your carcasses fall off. But that in itself was for a reason. Um, only they new birth went over. Uh, there was only three saved alive, but only they, uh, and that represents the father, son, and the Holy spirit. But, uh, there was only, um, three, there was only, uh, I mean, their, their, um, new birth went over there, meaning that that old man had to die off before they can go into the, uh, uh, uh promised land. And it's just like with us, that old way of thinking, that old carnal way, uh, uh calling our creator by his wrong name and all that has to die off before you can, uh, enter into the kingdom of Yahshua on the side, which takes, which is taking place now. He's accepting, uh, uh, people now, <laughs> you know, he's, he's accepting, uh, 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 people right now. Um, so that all has to die off and you have to, uh, 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 get in tune with Yahshua the Messiah and have that lamb into you in, in you before you can go over to the promised land it needs to be taking place. Now, in spite of what people believe, oh, when I die, I'm going to set this all straight with Peter at the pearly gates. No, that's not going to happen like that. No. And I'm going to see all these people have a family reunion. It's not going to happen like that. You are in a judgment day. Now there's plenty of scriptures I can pull on that, but I did want to get, um, Acts 4 and 12 about that name. Um, this, that these names and for the new people, these names are vitally, I cannot stress this enough, vitally important. Yahshua the Messiah is the only savior that Yahweh sent to atone for our sins. And that's the only person that can give us eternal life. So, um, go over to Acts 4 and 12. Okay. Acts 4 and, um, um 10 through 12. And then okay. go to seven, John 17, 1. And three, um, go to uh, Philippians 2 and that, and we might not be able to get them all, but go ahead. Okay, uh, Acts uh, 4 and 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Yahshua the Messiah of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom Yahweh raised from the dead, even by him, do of this man stand here before you hold. This is a stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Okay, no other name given by men that you must be saved. Um, go ahead and get the other one. Do okay. You, seven, you Acts 7, yeah, I mean, John 17, one, uh, just go to three. Just go to three because I don't have time for the okay. one. And, and this is life. This is John 17 and three. And this is life eternal that they might know that thou only art the true El and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou hast sent. Okay. I have that, that's life. Well, my time is up. 
That's life eternal. Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, so it's very important that we hold on to those names. Um, if anyone, I have so many scriptures on believe on the name. He keeps asking saying the name, the name, the name, the name, the name. So obviously he must have a name and it's not God or Lord or Jesus. And with that, I say hallelujah. 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 Doc, thank you, Dr. DeAndre Stansel. Before we call our next speaker this evening, we'd like to welcome visiting brethren from our Southfield, Michigan class, Dr. Rhonda Brazil. Our second speaker for this evening is Dr. Katonia Parks from our Charlotte, North Carolina class. Dr. Parks. Good evening, class. <clears throat> um, <laughs> well, I um, tell you, I really enjoyed the uh, first vessel and, and there's just so much. There just so much and she talked about really how that um, <clears throat> what Yahweh's mission was and how that the world, they just don't understand that your creator of heaven and earth, that there is, he has a mission. There is a purpose. There's a pattern and plan of soul salvation. There's a standard in operation and there's a measuring rod. So we find out for the first time that she was talking about going back and picking up the children of Israel and showing has how Yahshua, who the world calls Jesus, was back there as Moses' minister and how that Yahshua, not Jesus, had worked out their soul salvation and how that they had to have that blood of the lamb on the inside of their house and how that blood of the lamb was a way for them to be able to come up out of Egypt. And so we find out when we read these things that they all testified unto him. There's a prescribed measure. The world, they don't know that Jesus was back there. So let me have, and let me just Try to slow down a little bit. I don't know how long uh, I'm going to be. Um, but let me have um, where he talked about in 1 John 5 and 39, search the scriptures. And I don't know if we have readers. So if I need to read it, I can. Um, 1 John 5 and 39. Okay, I, I, I have it for you, huh? Thank you, Jessica. Okay, John 5 and 39. Ye search, to, ye, ye search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. But you will not, but you will not come to me that you may have life. I receive honor not from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of Elohim in you, I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. Let another come in his own name. Him you will receive. Okay, so hold it right there for a minute. So, you know, it's talking about, Yahshua was telling them, ye search the scriptures. For in them, ye think you have eternal life. But they are they which testify unto me. And that goes today. These scriptures are pointing to our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. And then it goes on to say, but that he comes in his father's name. So the first vessel was talking about the importance of the name. So if he said that he's coming in his father's name, we know that there's no similarity with Jesus and Yahweh or Lord is a title, God is a title, and it was just impossible. Really, the moderator is your first speaker. It's just an impossibility for his name to have been Jesus. There is not a Jesus back there. The letter J is the newest letter in our alphabet. Didn't come in, the letter J didn't come, out, come in until some 500 years ago or 400 years ago. Should have been X, Y, Z 
then J, just in possibility. The letter J is not in, even in the Hebrew, Greek, or Latin alphabet today. So it, it, it's just impossibility for the name to have been Jesus. It was Yahshua Messiah. He said that he comes in his father's name. And we see the similarity with Yah, the Y-A-H, W-H, Yah, the masculine part, way the feminine part, Yah, and then we see Yahshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. And you come in your father's name. We have a Romans 1, 19 and 20. It says that we can look, well, let's read that. Because it also says we're telling you these things. We're able to pick it up in the scriptures. But there's something else that we're able to do when it talks about prove all things. So let me have Romans 1, 19 and 20. Okay, this is uh, Romans 1, 19 and 20. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh have showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so they so that they are without excuse. Okay, so then go back to John for me. So here we just read in Romans 1, 19 and 20, it says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. So his eternal power and supernal nature, the world's teaching that he is a trinity, but the word trinity is not even in your Bible, but he is a unity. And we talked about when we were reading it, are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature so that they are without it. Okay, I don't know what just happened there. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Um, and so I was saying that Romans 1, 19 and 20, that we also come in our father's name. Our last name is really our first name. Like my father's name was Bass. I come in my father's name. Bass, now Katonia was, I was a girl, but I, I came in my father's name. So we come and our father's name, so we can look at this whole universe and be able to understand his makeup. So when we were just reading in John 5 and 39, he said, search your scriptures, in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify unto me. Then drop on down. Uh, then he also went on to say that, read, um, 40, the 43rd verse for me, please. I, okay, this is John 5 and 43. I come in my father's name and you receive me not. Let another come in his own name, him ye will receive. Okay, so the whole world, they're receiving Jesus and Jesus is not a name, really it's an idol. And it's a concoction of Hindu, Greek, it's really an idol. And we, we all talk about and we've heard about that sun god, Zeus. Um, so and then also in the 1611 edition of the King James Bible, the letter J is not even in there. So it's just an impossibility. Read on. Uh, drop down to the 46 verse. Okay, the 46, John 5 and 46. For had you believed Moses... Ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye, ye believe my word? Okay, so the first vessel she just talked about how you call Jesus Yahshua, which is Yahshua Messiah. He was back there 
with Moses. And she talked about that Passover and she talked about how they had to have the blood of the lamb on the inside of their door hose, pointing to Yahshua the Messiah, his blood, and that Passover for us from death unto life. In other words, you have to have the blood of Yahshua the Messiah in your household. And just like the first vessel was talking about, they had to eat the lamb in their house, just like we have to be partaker of his spirit in our house, in our soul, in order for us to come up out of Egypt, in order for us to come out of the world. We have to have the blood of the lamb on the inside of our doorpost now. And as she talked about, there wasn't any, even though there were synagogues back there, uh, they were eating it in their house. And so today the world, they're going to uh, these different churches and all of this and the feast they are having. No, that was not the what was on the menu. And she already talked about what was required. And so the blood of the lamb of Yahshua Messiah pointed to that true lamb where they had to have the blood of the lamb on the top of their door posts, on the two side posts, and then they dipped it in the basin, pointing unto, now Yahshua Messiah, it talked about that Moses wrote of him. We see the four points of the blood of Yahshua Messiah when he was on this cross. You see where they put blood, it was on the, uh, uh, the uh, left, the top of the doorpost or the, his left and right hand, there was a points of blood. There was a crown, I'm sorry. The, the top of the, here the cross here, you see the, the crown, which was the top of the doorpost. And then you see on the two side posts where they put nails in his hands and his feet. And then you see where they dipped it from the basin. Then they put, uh, uh, you see the nails that were placed in his, in his feet. And so, and that's the only reason why we talked about Romans 1, 19 and 20. That's the only reason why today that we have fingernails and toenails because they put blood, they put the nails in his hands and his feet, or Romans 1, 19 and 20. So here we find out for the first time, not only that, what he was doing, we find out they talked about this Passover um, and what this what he, what his mission, really, what he was doing, he was fulfilling everything that was set up. Well, we just read, search the scriptures, and then you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify unto me. So there was talking about showing that prescribed measure, Jesus or Yahshua back there with Moses, setting up everything that was already instituted from the foundation of the world. So he set everything up and then he's coming in to fulfill what was set up. The world is saying that he's setting a Christian example for us to follow. No, he's coming in to fulfill everything that was already written or ordained from the foundation of the world. We talk about that lamb. Uh, and having to have the blood of that lamb and that innocent sacrifice. Well, then when we pick up John 1 and 29, it talks about, the, uh, and it's also in Revelations, but John 1 and 29, it talks about Yahshua Messiah coming unto John. And he's saying, behold, the lamb of Yahweh, which take away the sins of the world. Um, so he's that true lamb. And in Revelations, it talks about that lamb being slain from the foundation of the world. So she talked about the first vessel in order for them to get up, up out of Egypt. They had to have the blood of the lamb on the inside of their doorpost. In order for us to get up out of that world, we have to have the blood of Yahshua Messiah in our home. So we find out really what what they call this Passover. For us, we have to have Yahshua Messiah. That's what Pentecost is all about. And that he shed his blood for the remission of our sins. There's no way that we could have been able to do anything 
on our own. There's no way that we knew anything about him. There's no way that we were able to work out our soul salvation because the whole world was deceived. So we find out that he was setting up everything, then he came in to fulfill it. Now, what are you talking about that he came in to fulfill? We find out there's definitions in our Bible and that he was coming in and back there with Moses, that she was talking about, they come up out of Egypt. They were given all these carnal ordinances. There were 613 laws. And um, let me have Galatians, the third chapter. There were 613 laws. It just magnified sin. It just let them know that they needed a savior and that actually this law was to the Hebrews or to the Jews only. It wasn't to the Gentiles. And with Yahweh, there's either if you're not a Jew, then you're a Gentile. They're just two nations. So this didn't even belong to us. So he came in to fulfill this Old Testament. So the word fulfill means to complete to bring to an end, to translate into reality. So just like they had the blood of the lamb on the inside of their doorpost, now we have that true lamb, that true law, which is Yahshua Messiah, that Holy Spirit, that's the true lamb. So he's coming in to transfer everything over to reality. In other words, um, and I love, we've got a, uh, a speaker that does this all the time. He talks about, if you make a list, Romans 1, 19 and 20, and you write in, write down on your list, bacon, eggs, and cheese, then you go to the store and you fulfill it or translate it into reality. You don't tear off that piece of paper eggs. You get the real, you get the reality. You get the eggs. You don't tear off on that sheet of paper the bacon. You get the reality. You get the bacon. So he's that true law. He's that true lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world and came in and worked out our soul salvation. That's what Pentecost is all about. That's what's going on today. Pentecost is still going on. He's putting his spirit in you. And let me have Jeremiah 31, 31. And I will read it um, because I also want Luke 24 and 25. And I, I can get Jeremiah 31, 31. I did have it here if you want. Did you, want. Oh, did you still want Galatians? I have Galatians 4 and 4. Oh, yes, I do. I want Galatians. Um, I want Jeremiah 31, 31 first. I I have Jeremiah 31 and 31. Oh. Behold, the days come, say of Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, say of Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, say of Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no, Yahweh, but they shall all know me from the least of them until the greatest of them saith, Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Thank you. So he was talking about, and we talked about that covenant really he made with Abraham. He was given that promise. Abraham was not a part of this. He was not under these carnal ordinances. So these carnal ordinances, it just magnified sin and let them know they needed a savior. So he said he was going to put his spirit in our heart, in our mind. So we pick up, we'll read a little bit about that. 
So here, when the Israelites were given this law, it just magnified sin and it let them know that they needed a savior. So pick up Galatians. I'm going to have you just read a little bit of it. Galatians 3 and um, uh, 3 and 3, and then drop down to 11 and 17 and then 19. Okay, Galatians 3 and 3. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Okay, so he's talking about these carnal ordinances. And so uh, read on down. Okay, did she say 11 verse? The 11th verse? Um, 10 and 11. 10 and 11. For as many as are of the works of ceremonial laws are under the curse, for it is written, cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do to do them, but that no man is justified by the ceremonial ceremonial law in the sight of Yahweh. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Okay, so it talks about that no man is justified by this sermon law, but here that the just shall live by faith. So he's talking about putting his spirit in us, but the whole world, they're under these carnal ordinances and they think that they can work out their soul salvation, but he nailed all this to the crawl, the cross. He translated everything into reality. He's that true law. No man is justified by this ceremonial law, is justified by faith, and that's having his spirit put in you and him right in your heart and mind and him giving you his heart and him being the head and that true body or assembly is his body. So the 11 verse is that no man is justified by this law, that the just shall live by faith. Pick up the 17th verse for me. Okay. Uh, um, Galatians 3 and 17. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of Yahweh in his Messiah, the Le Levitical law, which came for 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Okay, so it's talking about this ceremonial laws um, that came in some uh, 430 years after Moses was given that promise, which we read. Moses was, I mean, Abraham was given that promise, but these laws cannot disannul that it came in after Abraham was given that promise and we're under the promise not under this law so it's not going to be able to disannul it uh read on 19 first okay wherefore the servant the ceremonial law it was added because of transgressions Okay, so it's asking you, wherefore then serveth the ceremonial law? It was added because of transgression. But the world, they're still trying to work out their soul salvation, and they're still trying to carry out um, and worship him with all these carnal ordinances, which is an abomination. He's already fulfilled all of that and brought it to an end. Uh, 21st, 1st. Okay, 21st chapter, I mean, verse. Is the ceremonial law then against the promise of Yahweh? By no means. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the ceremonial law. But the scriptures have concluded all under the law that the promise by faith of Yahshua the Messiah might be given to them that believe. Okay, so it talks about the scriptures have concluded, see, all under sin. So we were all under sin 
from that uh, fall of Adam. And maybe we should pick that up because the world still wants to have you under that endemic sin. But see, Yahshua, he came in and he fulfilled all of this, worked out our soul's salvation and translated everything on over to reality. This is a spiritual dispensation and we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. Then he came in, fulfilled everything that was set up there uh, that pointed unto him and he came in and fulfilled it. Um, pick up the 24th verse. Okay, the 24th verse. Wherefore, the ceremonial law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto the Messiah that we might be justified by faith. Okay, so again, these carnal ordinances was just a schoolmaster to bring us up unto the Messiah again that we might be justified by faith. So we find out that he was coming in and he was fulfilling what was already set up. So let's pick up a little bit of that. Let's pick up Luke 24 and I think we read 27. Let's read that and then drop down to 24 and 44 of Luke. Uh, and before you, and then let me have Matthew 5, 17 and 18. I just want to pick up a little of these scriptures saying that he's coming in to fulfill everything that was set up. The world is saying that he's setting up a Christian example for us to follow, but no, He's already fulfilling or translating into reality the things that were already set up that was already ordained from the foundation of the world. He's fulfilling them. So let's pick up a little bit of that. Um, Matthew 5, 17 and 18, and then Luke. This is Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass until, so in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Okay, so he said the jotting of an eye and the crossing of the T, there's not read that again for me and let me sure 18th verse for verily i say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled okay so he said every jot and every tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled so that's what he was doing he was fulfilling everything that was set up, not setting up a Christian example for us to follow. He already set everything up. It was already ordained from the foundation of the world. Now he's fulfilling, making he's the true law, making he's that reality. He's that lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You have to put his spirit in us. Because we know that it didn't do them any good when we talk about those tables of stone and that Moses, he was given those two sets of those tables of stone, that first set, and then he came down and he broke that first set. And he was given that second set of tables of stone because it was just showing that he was going to write it in our hearts, in our mind fulfilling everything that he set up. So let's pick up Luke uh, 24, 44. Okay, uh, Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Okay, so, you know, he's, we, I had to read, search the scriptures, for in them you think 
ye have eternal life, but they are they that testify unto me. So when we pick up Matthew, uh, let's pick up Matthew 26 and um, 26. All right, this is Matthew 26 and um, 26, sorry. Okay, Matthew 26 and 26. And as they were eating, Yahshua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat this, my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. But okay. this is... And I'm sorry, but I'm going to interrupt you. Once again, now he had set up the Passover where he was, where they were eating of that lamb in their houses, and they had to have that blood of the lamb on the inside of their house in order for them to pass from death unto life. So if that deaf angel seen that blood of that lamb on the inside of their doorpost, and then they were able to pass on over from death unto life. So now here we got Yahshua, who's fulfilling everything that was set up back there. And he, in other words, he was translating into reality. He's that true law. He's that true lamb. So here he is eating that Passover, not Easter, Easter, I think, is only mentioned one time in your Bible somewhere in Acts. So it was not Easter. It was really referring to, and it really should have read the Passover. Mm -hmm. So here again, here he is fulfilling what he had set up, eating that Passover with his disciples. So then he goes on to say, uh, read on. Sure, 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament. Which is, which is shared for many for remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink here at, I'm sorry, here henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drank it new with you in my father's kingdom. Okay, so then right there he says, for this is my blood of the New Testament. So we're letting you know that he fulfilled everything now to the and this New Testament now is no longer the Old Testament of these carnal ordinances, over 613 laws. He nailed all that to the cross. Uh, and I know I'm not going to have time to get all the scriptures, but you can pick that up in Colossians 2 through 10. Uh, Colossians, the second chapter, 10 through the 15 verses. He nailed all that to the cross. Now he translated it into reality, and he's going to put it in our heart and mind. That this is a New Testament. This is where we're at now in this present kingdom age, in this spiritual dispensation. We're under this New Testament, which really is his body. But then he goes on to say that, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, for the remission of sins, but then he goes on to say, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So not only are we talking about this Passover by him putting his spirit in you. And so when he was washing his disciples' feet, that's just a type and child where he's cleaning us up. Um, or it talks about, I think it's somewhere in, um, oh, Corinthians is saying the same thing about um, the world they are gathering. And, and he's letting them know, no, you are to eat it in your house, not in these churches. Don't you have houses to eat in? Uh, and that is an abomination to him. Does anybody know where that's at? Is it in Corinthians somewhere? Well, yeah, it's Corinthians 11, yeah, 20. It's, yeah oh. I have it. Okay, can you pick that up for me? It's a, it, this is 1 Corinthians 11, 11 and 20. 
When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Okay, so uh, again, and the world is doing this. It says, what? <laughs> What's it say? <laughs> oh, you want 1 Corinthians 6, 19? Um, no, I want you to read that again, what you just said. Oh, sure. When you come, when you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Okay. Um, you want me to read the second? Yeah, I want you to read on down a little bit because I like 21 and then really 26. Okay. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of Yahweh or God and shame them that have not? What right. shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Continue. Or you want me to go to 26? Yeah, I want you to go down to 26 because then he's saying, don't you have houses to eat in? You see, this is what they were supposed to be doing. He set all that up and then he's coming in and he's fulfilling it. We're supposed to have that spirit, that true lamb of Yahshua Messiah in our houses today. That's how we're going to pass from death unto life right now. That's the only way that we're going over. So then it goes on to say, read the 26 verse. Sure, 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, okay, okay go ahead. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup, um, I don't know if you want to use the name or the true name of the Lord, uh, but, but this cup of Yahweh unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of Yahweh. Okay, so then again, it's talking about for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show Yahshua's death, you call Jesus until he come. Okay, but see now. There's no longer, we're not partaking of this, what they call this Passover that he's already fulfilled and translated into reality. He's already come back now in the same manner that they seen him. They were talking about him coming on a cloud. See, he's come back in your cloud and your brain and picking you up and supping with you because we were all dead from the fall of Adam. So now with this Passover and this new covenant, he's going to put it in our heart, in our mind. He's going to wash us up. He's going to cleanse us. This was all this was pointing to. And then it went on to say back in Matthew 26 and 28 that this blood of the new, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. So we find out for the first time in our lives what the New Testament is. It's not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's his biography. But the New Testament now is being a member of his body. He's the head and he's supping with us. We're the uh, assembly or his body. It's his blood that's on the inside of our house. He's our preacher, our teacher, our comforter, our revealer. That's Yahshua, the Messiah in you your only hope of glory. Jesus is not coming back. He's already here. And so here we talk about for the first time, what are you talking about? Now he said in Matthew 26, 26, 
He said that he would not drink it again, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So if he's come back and he's put his spirit in you and his, he does that, his Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua the Messiah, not Jesus, then what that does, that translates you into the kingdom. You're not waiting for him to come back. He's already here in your heart and then in your mind. So let's pick up what the kingdom is. Let's pick up Romans 14 and 17. And then Colossians, um, I can read it, Romans 14 and 17, and I'm. I have Colossians for you. Okay, Romans 14 and 17. Um, it says that for the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So if he's putting his spirit in you, that's your Passover from death unto life, that puts you in the kingdom right now. Right now, being in the kingdom right now and learning of him and supping with him, that's your Passover. So if that's the kingdom, and we have definitions in our Bible, we just read to you what the kingdom is, then let's pick up Colossians 1 and um, 12. Okay, Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light whom have delivered us from the power of darkness and have has translated us in the kingdom of his dear son. Okay, so the kingdom, uh, the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So here we find out where it says, what? Know you not that your body is the temple? So that's, it's not the church on the corner and Maybe we should pick that up and read it. First uh, Corinthians six nineteen. Okay, this is First Corinthians six and nineteen. Mm -hmm. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye ha which ye have of Yahweh, and you are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are Yahweh's. Okay. So because he paid the price, he shed his blood for us for the remission of sins it was not in vain. And so every time that you try to keep these carnal ordinances or try to um, work out your own soul salvation and following all these carnal ordinances, you're really saying you're crucifying him afresh. You're saying that what he did wasn't good enough. Now, there's a prescribed manner in worshiping him. So it says that our body is the temple. So now, see, we're in a spiritual dispensation. So it's required for us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we pick that up in John 4, 23 and 24. Um, this is John 4, 23 and 4. But the hour cometh, I'm sorry, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yahweh is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
Okay, so it's required. And then we talk about, see, worship him in spirit and truth. We're talking about being in that kingdom and giving thanks unto the Father. Thank you. I see that five minutes. Um, so all of this, he's already forgiven us for our sins. He's working out our soul salvation and being a part of that body. Then he's given us his heart. So we know with all the stuff that's going on in this world that is just crazy and that is just evil continuously and that there is no way that this can continue on. But see, that Holy Spirit that has a name, which is Yahshua the Messiah, he came in and now he's put his spirit in you. And when he puts his spirit in you, then he gives you his heart. And having that heart, then it allows for you, we can say that I was blind, but now I see. Where there was once hatred, there is love. So we're putting on his attributes. With These are our wedding garments. He's feeding us, he's leading us, he's guiding us because we're a part of his body now. And so now for the first time, then you can look to the author and the finisher of your faith because he's worked out our soul salvation. You are no longer in, we're in the world, but not of this world. We're on a journey for eternal life. Now the world, they think that this is going to go on, but there's no way that this can continue. He's wrapping it up just like it ended with Noah. And there was a way that was prepared, that ark of the covenant in order for them to be able to go from death unto life. Well, Yahshua Messiah, will you call Jesus? Then he has prepared and worked out our soul salvation by putting his spirit in us and making us a member of his body. So now he's teaching us, he's leading us, and he's guiding us because the whole world was deceived. And I didn't know that. So it's just an impossibility for man to know anything about their creator because they were all deceived. So let's pick that up and read that. So if they were all deceived, then you have mankind that they have their own concept, theory, and opinion. And so there's that appointed time, you know, before they didn't know what he was doing, but now he's come and he's put his spirit in us. So we're no longer following the traditions of men and their concept, theory, and opinion. And they can't help it because they were all deceived. So it takes that Holy Spirit to reveal unto you and to bring you out of darkness as was just read giving thanks unto the father who's pulled us out of the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son and that kingdom is righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit you can have that's the true communion that's this true supping with him you can have that going on right now. He's prepared a place for us, and that's being a part of his body going on over into this spiritual kingdom in mortality. And that's an appointment that we're all going to either we're going to all spend eternal life somewhere, eternal glorification or eternal damnation. So he's left a way for us to know him as he really is and actually <coughs> exists. And it's so beautiful what it talked about in John 17, 1. Do three about making. Well, let's read the definition for eternal life. Let me have that real quick. I'm about out of time here. And I know I'm just all over the place. Um, you on John 17 and one? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is John 17. 
And when there, these words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also might glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal mm -hmm. life to as many as thou hast given him. Okay. And this so, is like... Sorry. I'm sorry. Once again, here is a definition that's in our Bible. Okay, my time is up. Oh, okay. Well, um, eternal life is to know him. And so he's left a way for us to do that. So if you got anything out of that, all honor, glory, and praise goes to our only Savior, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Katonia Parks. We'd like to thank all of our speakers and all of our visitors this evening. We'd like to thank Dr. Sasha Ragnilovich from our Madison, Wisconsin branch, Dr. Rhonda Brazil from our Southfield, Michigan branch. We'd also like to thank our visitors that joined us this evening. We'd also like to thank Naomi and also Dr. B. Jean. We just have a few announcements before we end class. Also, we'd like to thank our scripture readers for this evening. Um, we meet publicly at the Hillside Best Western Plus Hotel located at 4400 Frontage Road in Hillside, Illinois on Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. On Monday nights via Zoom and YouTube from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Also, we meet twice a month in person on Thursdays from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Those meeting dates are announced on a monthly basis. The next in-person class is on Monday, April 15th. Monday, April 15th from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. May we all bow our hearts and minds uh, to be dismissed with doxology, and we'll ask the Zoom participants to st stay on after the streaming has ended for further announcements. Doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times, now and forever. Let us